The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of Daniel Fusco Ministries. Check this out from today's edition of Real with Daniel Fusco. I don't know how it works for you. Sometimes you could be in a situation and everybody says complimentary things, but one person says something that's negative and the only thing you can think about for the next week is the negative thing. So you see that the way that we respond in situations has the creative ability either to stir up anger or to turn away anger. But really don't miss the fact that by the words of our mouth we'll be condemned or justified because we confess Jesus with our mouths. We all learned as kids that uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And that was a good little, uh, good little nursery rhyme. But in the end of the day, can we be honest? It's not true at all. For, for many of us, our words can hurt. You know, we've been wounded by words. You know, uh, we've had these experiences where, where people say things and they stick to us like crazy glue. Right? Like, you, you, I don't know how it works for you. Sometimes you could be in a situation and everybody says complimentary things, but one person says something that's negative and the only thing you can think about for the next week is the negative thing. Right? So, so our words matter. And today we're going to start a, a series looking at the power of words, what our words can do so that we can be aware of it. And I, 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 we're doing this purposefully because, you know, we, we're living in a world where attacking other people verbally uh, is kind of becoming commonplace. You know, like people are just, it, it's such an aggressive culture now. And I think, you know, and, and I'm not against social media at all. You all know I do social media as much as the next person. But we have this, our society now is just so, the words are just vicious at this point. People are vicious to one another. And listen, as, as a church family, as we see what's going on in our culture, we want to say, well, what does the Bible say about our words? And so we're starting this brand new series today that we're calling Sticks and Stones. And, and the way I wanted to start this series, you know, normally we teach verse by verse through chapters and books of the Bible. That's kind of our normal way of doing it. But I wanted to start this series um, with what would be called a topical message, where just to kind of be able to set the framework for this series to be able to look at our words. And so I've called this message, Your Words Matter. Now, the first thing you need to know about your words, and the reason I think this is important also is because guess what? All of us communicate with words, right? Like, like I don't miss the fact that your posts on social media, you're still using words. You're not speaking them out, you're typing them, but, but words are one of the primary ways that we communicate. And so because we're all using words, words are a utility that God has given us to be able to express ourselves and all these different things. We want to make sure that we are utilizing this gift of words in a way that honors the Lord. So, so to get this thing going, here's the first step of this. You have to realize that words are creative. Words are creative. Now, you might say, well, Fusco, uh, where do you get that from? Well, listen to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without, without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 6. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse 9. Then God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and so on. See, the, the creation account, over and over again, God's words are creating everything. Now, I am not saying that our words are creative the way God's words are, because really God's word can create something out of nothing. Uh, the old word for that is ex nihilo. That God can bring something into existence before there was anything there. Now, that's God. God can do that. But our words are creative because we are using things that are already in existence, but 
our words have the same creative properties. And in a lot of ways, when we realize that our words are creative, it shows us the power that we have within our words and how it's important that we be careful. What do you want your words to create? Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter uh, 12, verse 18. It says, There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Wow. See, see, and that's why we're going to be using a lot of Proverbs here. This book of wisdom, so much about the tongues that there is one who speaks like the piercing of a, of a sword. Like, so there are some who, when they use words, their words cut and they hurt. But the tongue of the wise promotes health. So a wise person utilizes words to bring health and wholeness, to, to build up rather than tear down, to, to bless rather than curse, to, to bring together rather than divide. Your words can either cut down or your words can, can promote health. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, about words being creative. A soft answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Now you hear that. So in the midst of a conversation, if you share a harsh word, then it creates the context for, for, for wrath to be able to happen, right? But in the same thing, a soft, a, a, a soft word will turn away that wrath. So you see that the way that we respond in situations has the creative ability either to stir up anger or to turn away anger. Now, you see how important this is? Because it's just like where the rubber meets the road where we all live. We talk to people all the time, right? And how often when somebody, when, there, when something goes on and things get heated that we add a harsh word onto it and we make it worse or how often when someone gets something gets heated, we say, oh, hey, hold on, hold on a second. I, I, think, I think we're going down the road that neither of us want to go down right now. See, we're all always in communication with other people, whether it's via email or text or direct messages or social media or we're talking one-on-one. -on -one. And really a lot of us have not taken hold of the fact that God wants to do something with our words. And your words are creative. Just the way God created the heavens and the earth through words, we can promote health. We can cut like a sword. We can create fights. Or we can stop fights with how we choose to use our words. And I believe that God wants to do a revolutionary work in all of us in the ways that we speak what we choose to say, why we choose to say. Now, what else does the Bible teach us about words? Well, it teaches us that words are a window into your heart. That words are actually a window into your heart. Really what it means is that what you say shows you what's in your heart. You don't believe me? Listen to what Jesus said. This is Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 37. It says this. This is Matthew 12, 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account on, of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Ouch! I mean, those are the words of Jesus. I mean, it's amazing what he's saying. He's saying that words are a window into your heart because he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So here's the deal. Anytime, whatever comes out of your mouth shows you, it's a window into what's actually in your heart. One of the things that I love so much about the Lord is the Lord already knows what is inside of us. It's not like the Lord is shocked by these things that are inside of us. The Lord already knows Often we can be shocked by what's inside of us. 
But what we end up having is that once we realize that there's something inside of us that is not what God would have, then we come to the Lord and say, oh Lord, we confess it to the Lord. Lord, you know what's in my heart. And Lord, I want to turn away from it. Lord, I'm giving it to you. I'm, I'm agreeing with you that that's wrong. And Lord, I want you to, to do a work to cleanse my heart so that I feel differently or I think differently or I act differently. Jesus is the great heart surgeon. He wants to do a work in all of our lives and none of us are c- completed yet. I mean, in Christ, we're perfected, but our experience of that perfection, every single day, we're in this process of sanctification. So I I always like to remind people that like, I'm not what I used to be, and I'm not what I'm gonna be, but today's a day to move in the right direction. So, So God is doing a work. And so when you see what's in your heart through the words that you, that you choose to speak or the words that you want to speak but you are smart enough not to say it, it's an opportunity to confess it to the Lord, to repent, and then of course rejoice in God's forgiveness that he would love people like us. Because I mean, you hear what Jesus says here in, in, in Matthew chapter 12, that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. And then he reminds us that For every idle word that we speak, we will give an account for in it uh, on the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Now, that last statement is kind of heavy, isn't it? That we all going to give an account. Because really on the day of judgment, we give an account for the totality of our lives. And our words are part of the totality of our lives. But really don't miss the fact that by the words of our mouth, we'll be condemned or justified because we confess Jesus with our mouths. And that's what the Apostle Paul talked about in Romans chapter 10. See, that's why it's so important for us to confess Jesus as Lord. Because with confession, it's made unto salvation. See, so when you believe in Jesus, you're, you're not ashamed to say, I confess that Jesus is my Savior. Could we take that step? Because that confession is the key to eternity being justified because of the finished work of Jesus. So we want to grab hold of the fact that our words show us what's in our heart. And when we see what's in our heart, we want to be able to confess what's wrong, repent of it, and rejoice. And obviously, if you have good things coming out of your heart and you're speaking uh, beautiful words, you praise God for that because it's God, the Spirit's work in your life that's doing that as well. Now, Because of all this, what do we learn? We learn next that words must be guarded. Words must be guarded. Because for every idle word that we speak, Jesus said, we're going to have to give an account. So we, we want to not just speak our minds all the time. We want to guard our words. One of the things that I always like to remind myself and tell other people is that once you say it, you can't take it back. Like it's been said, those words, because they're creative and it's a window in your heart, it's better not to say it than to say it and wish you hadn't, right? So you need to guard your words. Now listen to what it says. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Proverbs 21, 23 says it this way. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. I mean, can it get more plain as day than that? Because if you take the alternative, if you don't guard, then you're creating troubles for your soul because not everything we say should see the light of day. Now, I think that's one of the things, that's one of the struggles we have in our culture because our culture has kind of grown to say that like, I am just who I am. Like, like we, we really want transparent. Everyone's like, well, this is who I am, deal with it. And actually, the book, the Bible says that's the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. Like, we live in a day where people are like, well, that's who I am. If you don't like it, you can deal with it. No, no, no. That's foolishness. Because really what it's saying is that me as I am, I should impose that on everybody. It's the ultimate in narcissism and pride. Actually, what God wants is for us to be aware of what we are, but not impose that on everybody. There's a difference between transparency and vulnerability. Transparency says, this is who I am, deal with it. And vulnerability says, this is who I am, can you help me? Right? And in a world that loves transparency, everyone just speaks their mind, the Bible says, actually, don't do that. Guard your mouth and then ask for help. 
Don't say the things that you wish you had. I mean, and listen, all, I, I, like, listen, raise your hand. How many of you have said things you wish you hadn't before? All of us have, right? There's like, you have, you're having a disagreement or you're having a discussion and all of a sudden you say something, you're like, why did I say that? And, 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 and because you didn't guard it, now you have, there's troubles, there's all these things that go on because words are creative, they give a window into our soul, and once they're out there, you can't pull them back. And that's why, of course, the Bible says, Lord, uh, let our words be few. And just because you have that in your heart doesn't mean you should speak it. And can I just talk about this? I mean, we are in an election year, and I realize that, every, you know, our culture is insane right now. But if you're a follower of Jesus, you should not share, repost all the political garbage. Like it's, you should guard, there's people who don't vote the way you vote, who Jesus loves, who you're, you have some sort of a relationship with them if they haven't unfriended you yet because you're polarized that Jesus wants to reach through you and all you're doing is obscuring the gospel. I mean, why would you want to offend people over politics that Jesus died to forgive. I mean, it makes no, and like, nobody ever gets saved because somebody is blathering about whatever they're blathering about and c cutting down the gospel. And we have this going on every single day. We should guard our words. Just because, you know, here, here's what you want, the, you want the test. You want the test for your words. Ask yourself before you post it, before you say it, does this display the fruit of the Spirit? It's, it's a, it's a great test. It gets the job done. You say, does what I'm going to say now, is it loving? Is it joyful? Is it full of God's peace? Is it patient? Is it kind? Is it gentle? Do these words show my faithfulness to the Lord? Right? I mean, like, are these words exercising self-control? I mean, like, it's such a simple test because we want to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. We know that when we're in the Spirit, we, we have the fruit of the Spirit on display. And we need to make sure that we guard our hearts because everything that we think should not see the light of day. It shouldn't just come flying out of our mouths. And I remember, when, <laughs> this is so funny that I'm even sharing this with you all, but, you know, hey, it's, it's family. I remember when I first got saved, I started asking God for like a three second delay like they have on TV. Now I think it's more like 10 seconds between when it happens and when they show it on TV. So they have to, if they need to edit anything or beep out bad words, I started saying, Lord, will you give me a, a filter, like, like a 10 second delay, a three second delay between when I think something and when I say it. Because growing up with a big mouth, everything I thought would just fly out of my mouth. Right, and, and, and without any regard for the consequences of it. But when I started walking with Jesus, I realized this is not a good thing. I, there needs to be like a filter, right? So that, so that certain things that I'm, I'm going to say, I don't say. And every once in a while, when things slip out that I don't want to slip out, I'm always like, oh man, Lord. But I, I realize how far I've come, but I also realize how far I need to go. Because your words are creative. They show what's in your heart, but they should be guarded, right? And, there, and, and when you don't say certain things, but they're in your heart, it's so much better to just have to deal with it with the Lord and say, Lord, you know this is in my heart. You know this is not glorifying you, but Lord, at least I'm not saying it and tearing people down. I'm not saying this and destroying relationships. I'm not saying this and creating all sorts of troubles for me and other people because of the dumb stuff that's in my heart. Lord, do the heart work without all of the collateral damage of saying these things. So our words must be guarded. And then finally, you and me, our words should bless people. Our words should be a vehicle for the blessings of God. And really that's why God created our words. So that not only we can communicate with one another, but we could bring a tangible blessing through his heart and his words coming through our heart and our words. Like, listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Now, we don't really get the, the implication that pleasant words are like a honeycomb until you realize that the only way to sweeten anything 
in biblical times was through honey. There was no high fructose corn syrup. There was no, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whatever you use to try and sweeten your stuff up. You know, brown sugar, cane sugar, you know, uh, spirulina. I mean, whatever people use to, 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 to sweeten up their stuff, right? It's like all they had was the honeycomb. And so they're saying literally words that are building up pleasant words, words that bless are like the best sweetener. They bring sweetness to the soul and health. Like, so, so it's not only like a, a spiritual thing. There's also there's physical blessings that come along with it. And then, don't miss this. Speaking about our words that bless people. Listen to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Now, I want to unpack that for you because it's really powerful. First, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. It doesn't say, listen, let a corrupt word proceed out of your mouth if you're arguing politics. It doesn't say, let a corrupt word proceed out of your mouth because you think it's a funny joke, even though you shouldn't say it. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. So, so there's like a, a definite prohibition against corruption coming out of your mouth, right? Because your words are created. They're a window into your heart. They should be guarded. So you when you catch yourself wanting to share a corrupt word, you should guard that, right? But instead, what is good for necessary edification? So you should guard your words and only let come out of your mouth what is good to, what's necessary to build people up. And how do you build people up? By imparting grace to your hearers. So God's plan for our words is that our words impart grace. The grace of Jesus, the, the love of God. The goodness of God, the truth of God's word. But we speak the truth not brutally, but we speak the truth as the Apostle Paul said, what? In love. And uh, Warren Wearsby, the, the Bible commentator, said it this way, that love without truth is hypocrisy and truth without love is brutality. So when, you, when, you, when you're a truth teller, without love, it's brutal. It brutalizes people. It hurts people, right? But, and we want that, love, that truth spoken of in love. And so we want our words to impart grace to people. That's God's goal. That our words are a vehicle to draw them closer to the Lord because our words build them up. They edify. They're guarded. We know that they're created and God wants our words to join him in the ushering in of his kingdom on this side of the earth. So as we bring this message to a close, I realize Gave this kind of message. I've been so convicted preparing it. I'm even more convicted sharing it right now. And what I realize is that because we all use words, God wants us to be aware our words create things, right? And because they create things, we have to always be careful. We have to guard them, right? We should use our words to bless. Any words that are not going to bless somebody, we should hold them back. Because those words give a window into our heart. And God is interested in doing a work of purification in all of our hearts. And as we, as Jesus said, as we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and we love our neighbors ourself, the journey of life is for God to do a work of purifying our words, transforming our words, changing our words. And now, I don't want anyone to feel like condemned because we've all failed. And if you're, if you're hearing this, you're like, oh, I just messed this up. Some of you right now, man, I had a huge blowout with my kids, my spouse, my neighbor just this morning or just today. And, and, and I can't believe I'm hearing this now. Listen, just ask the Lord for forgiveness. Go back and apologize where you messed up. Listen, we're all a work in progress. We're, we're all a renovation project. God's doing the work. But because we've heard this, now we're saying, Lord, how do you want me to walk in this? Lord, will you empower me? Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, thank you for the finished work of Jesus. And Lord, if there's a wicked way in me, will you cleanse me, Lord, and lead me in the way everlasting? Listen, we want our words to be a vehicle for Jesus to bring his blessings into the world. I realize that each one of us is in a different step of our journey of faith. And I realize that for many of you who are watching this program, you've made it all the way through the program. And the whole way through, deep in your heart, you're saying, I've never put my faith and trust in Jesus. And as you've been hearing this, and, and even long before you watched the real program, God has been doing a work in your life. There's been so many signposts 
so many different forks in the road that you find yourself now saying, if Jesus will forgive me of my sins, if Jesus will lavish his grace upon me, if Jesus will place his Holy Spirit within me, I want that. And I want you to have that. So in order to begin this journey officially with Jesus, I want you to pray a simple prayer, thanking Jesus for what he's done for you. So bow your head and your heart if you can, and just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for saving me. I believe in you, your life, your death on the cross, and your resurrection. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me and teach me to follow you. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen. If you just said yes to Jesus, I am beyond excited for you. But I want to know about it because there's more steps in the journey to take. So if you can pull out your mobile phone and text the word SAVED to 51400, all the info is on your screen. When you text that in, someone from my team is going to get in touch with you and we're going to get resources in your hands to help you on this beginning of your journey with Jesus. But don't go anywhere. I have a big idea that I want to share with you that will definitely bless you. You can take part in the amazing work God is doing through the powerful message that although life is messy, Jesus is real. By partnering with Daniel Fusco Ministries, you help make programs like this available to people who may not otherwise experience the love and hope only found in Jesus. With your regularly scheduled partnership, your generosity can help transform lives forever. Go to danielfusco.com partner now and become a part of the Daniel Fusco Ministry support team with your regularly scheduled or one-time gift. Be the hands and feet of Jesus in your world and become a partner today. Hey everybody, Daniel Fusco here. Welcome to today's Two Minute Message. No matter where you are, start your weekdays with an encouraging thought from Pastor Daniel. You'll find his popular Two Minute Messages on Facebook, or you can subscribe to them on YouTube so you don't miss any of them. Each weekday, Pastor Daniel brings insight and encouragement on important topics that affect your life in only two minutes or less. Join the community now. Go online and search for Daniel Fusco on Facebook or Pastor Daniel Fusco on YouTube. If you're looking for a church family in the Vancouver area, we invite you to check out Crossroads Community Church. We are a family of faith, fully engaged, transforming our community and our world. And we would love for you to be a part of what God is doing through the Crossroads family. Our main campus is in Vancouver, Washington. For service times and directions, visit crossroadschurch.net. So I'm just about out of time on today's program, but I want to connect with you during the week. Make sure you go to my website, danielfusco.com. There's so many resources there. I would love for you to sign up for our weekly newsletter and also partner with me. Help me get the simple message that Jesus is real out into the world. Click the partner tab to learn more. I also love social media, if you do. So I'm on all the different platforms. So many of you love the two minute messages on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm on all the other uh, platforms with all different contexts. So come and join me as we continue to grow each and every day together. Okay, here's a big idea that I'm sure is gonna bless you. And it's simply this, receiving God's love is what saves us because the gospel of Jesus Christ is not what we do, but it's what God has done. Okay, I gotta go, but never forget, although life is messy, Jesus is real and he loves us even in the midst of our messy lives. God bless you today. I'll see you soon.